Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with a technical terrain tutorial for you. Yes, the ones where we dip in and we look at specific techniques and multiple ways of doing things. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you three easy techniques for doing Watland Orb for your early European historic buildings. So, shall we crack on? Come on. So, Watland Orb was a construction technique back from a sort of early history, European history. And the way it worked was you would build a timber framed house, i.e., the main supports and everything made out of wood, and then you would get these sheets of woven wood, okay, and you would fix those in between the timber frames. Onto these sort of substructures, you'd apply a mix of, uh, of mud, clay, dung, and straw. Yeah, which all sort of went together and hardened. So you'd apply it to, to the woven mesh and that would give you your panels. Yeah, and that's a, basically the construction technique. Now, quite often in modelling, we do a lot of sort of early European houses. We do a lot of the timber frames. And so Watland Orb comes up a lot. And we've got three techniques to look at. But before we do, one quick chat about our actual what we're learning on. Now, what I've got here is I've got a really basic, and I mean basic, yeah, sort of example of a timber framed house. Now what this is, is dead simple, it's foam board, okay, which is our box standard foam board, that, uh, mounting board that you get from art shops. Yeah, on top of that, what I've done is, I've got some balsa wood, okay, I've brushed it along the length with a wire brush to get us just a little bit of grain. The grain doesn't really matter for the tutorial, but you know, it just helps a little. Yeah, and then obviously they're all PVA'd in and everything, and that's what we'll be learning on. So that's what we're going to be learning on. I'll grab my bits and we'll crack on with the techniques. See you in a sec. And so the first technique we're going to look at is probably the easiest, yeah? And it's one I picked up from the Terraniacs group. If you're not a member, get down below in the description. There's a link in the description. It's an awesome support group of over 15,000 Terraniacs helping each other and showing off their work. But anyway, I digress. This is a technique from the Terraniacs group, yeah? I can't remember who shared it, but thank you, whoever it was. Dead simple, okay? For the Watland Daub effect, what you're going to do is you're going to be using sandpaper. It's a perfect textured paper, and you can get it in various grays depending on how sort of bitty and raggedy you want the piece to look. Okay, I'm going for a really fine grade sandpaper. I think it's 240. Yeah, when you get your sandpaper, avoid this stuff. Now, what I mean by this stuff is the stuff with lines on it. Yeah, it doesn't really make a difference as a sandpaper, but when you come to paint it and that sort of stuff, any dry brushing, they'll highlight those lines. And so you need to be aware of that. Now, when it comes to actually doing the job, it's dead easy, okay? Obviously, we've got a learning bit here, and all I've done is I've cut out some squares. Yeah, and my shapes that I need to put in them. What I could have done if my was a really smart boy is Mel could have cut out the whole shape, then glued the timbers straight on top instead of having measure up and cut. So there's that option as well. Don't be mal, yeah? But if you do cut them, then it's dead simple. Obviously, first off, for cutting, you wanna use, you know, a metal ruler, you wanna use a sharp blade, and you want to watch your fingers. Mark your, your cuts out, make sure you cut them nice and, and slowly, and don't rush the job. Once you've actually got all your bits cut out, like we have here, it's time to actually glue them in. Now, to glue them in, you can, with them being sort of paper backed, you can use PVA, but I tend to find that when I've done it in the past, they curl up a bit. So I've got a little bit of super glue and all I'm gonna do is, dead simple, I'm just gonna put one in each corner, yeah, and one in the middle. It doesn't really need to be held down really firm. The reason being is once you paint over it, it'll be held in place anyway. So if we get a little bit of sandpaper, drop that in, and then what I've got is, I've just got a barbecue skewer, and what I'm doing is very gently just pushing down the edges so I don't fold it. There we go. And, there you go guys. That's what it looks like in. So, I'll just glue in the rest of these pieces, and I'll show you when it's done. 
And so, here it is. Dead easy, took five minutes. Yeah, and that will take a lovely texture when you paint it up. Obviously, it's a really simple design and that sort of stuff, but it's a really nice technique to have in your pocket. So, thanks to Rainiacs, or one to Rainiac in particular who shared that one. Yeah, now we're all doing it. Right, that was sandpaper. Now we're going to look at move and look on one of my techniques, my personal favourite, filler. Let's crack on. So for my next technique, we're going to be using my personal favourite, filler. Okay, and I'm going to be using Dial uh, Ready to Use Filler from B&Q. Just get yourself a decent quality filler. Quality does matter when it comes to this sort of stuff. I've got some water and then I've got a hog's hair brush. These are the white fibre ones. These are brilliant when you're working with filler and that sort of stuff because the natural hog hairs are really good at soaking up the excessive moisture, which is something that can mess this technique technique up. Synthetic and stable hair brushes don't soak up the moisture as well as hog's hair ones do. So get yourself a set of these. Yeah, they're dirt cheap. Now, all I've done is I've squeezed out a little bit of filler out my tube. Yeah, you don't actually need that much for this technique. And what I'm going to do is first just wet my brush. Just helps it mess it around. Yeah, take a blob. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is dead simple. I'm just going to push it onto the piece in the center. Not near the edges. Now, because it's dry and everything, it'll be a bit fiddly. Just wet it. Yeah, and that's when the filler starts to sort of go a little bit sloppy and you can start moving around and it'll stick a bit better. At that point, just start sticking it into the edges. Yeah, you can get a little bit more if you need. Yeah, and what I'm doing is I'm doing sort of like a little stippling technique here. Yeah, oh, a bit excessive water there. Spread that out a bit and let the brush soak it up. Up into all the edges. And when that dries, you will be left with that awesome <laughs> texture. Okay, guys? And it is literally as simple as that. A little blob of filler, put it in the middle, add some, uh, just a little water. If you get too much water, soak it off, yeah? Too much water will ruin the effect, but a little bit of water, move it around, yeah, and then when it dries, you'll be left with a nice hard coating that seals all the edges and adds just a little subtle texture to it. Yeah, it's easy, it's quick, and the results are beautiful. So, I'll crack on with this and I'll show you a photo. Beautiful, eh? And if you take a quick look, yeah, there you go. Dead easy texturing, just a little bit of fur, a little bit of water. You've just got to control it, you know what I mean? And just stipple. And remember, if you're not happy with the first results, you can flood the area and suck the filler off, or you can just go on and reapply another layer of stippling over the top. So that's another easy technique. Now this time, we're going to look at something a little bit more involved. Yeah, let's crack on with some Daz. So for our third and final and fancy technique, we've got Daz, okay? Uh, Daz is an air drying clay available in the UK. Any air drying clay will do in general, any crafting clay. Yeah, you're gonna need a, a watch, well, it's gonna get messy, you're gonna need a damp cloth. Yeah, if you've got any sculpting tools, they're a big bonus, but you can get away without them. Obviously water, okay? Now, laying it down and just doing the basic what you, what and daub sort of texturing with Daz is dead easy. The first thing you need to do is you need to wet the surface that the Daz is applying to. Because it's air drying, if you don't, it won't stick. Okay? So, come in, apply your Daz down and start spreading it out. And I'm just pushing it round and up towards the corners. Yeah? I don't have to get it perfect. Yeah? Because I can always come back and I can add more Daz in. So I'm just stroking it from the middle up to the corners. You'll hear me do a lot of that when I do these sort of terrain things. Start in the middle, yeah, and then work out towards the corners, okay? Yeah. With a wet finger, just give it a bit of a rub over. Yeah, also make sure you get rid of any finger marks. And very quickly, 
you have that texture, yeah? Which will easily do for a Watland daub. Now, you may have noticed when I held that up that there's a little bit cut out. I cut that out with a craft knife and what I'm gonna do is, very quickly, I'm gonna drop a little blob of the old Daz in there. Yeah, and fill that with a bit of Daz. I haven't even bothered putting the water in. It's a bit more textury, not a flat surface, so you don't have to as such, yeah? And then what I've got is, I've got a little bit of wattle, yeah? And if you'd like to see how I've done that, here's a quick segment. So just a quick one on how I'm doing my wattling. Right, I've got HD foam with four cocktail sticks stuck into it. I've got some really thin, what do you call it, balsa wood. I think it's a mill. And what I'm doing is, I'm very quickly, I've cut a strip off it, and I'm just soaking it. Okay, the water makes the balsa wood sort of a lot more flexible for what we're about to do. Yeah, and I need a couple of pieces on this, probably about three. So quickly soak that and snap those. And then all I'm going to do is, with my flexible ones, that I've had a nice soaking, yeah, come in and one way, overlap and just weave them between the cocktail sticks. And then I'll just push them down. Get the next one, and all I'm going to do is just stack these straight on top, yeah, just like that. So, round that one, round that one, round that one. <laughs> you can do it, bicycle. And then round that one. Come on, yeah. All the way down. And if I bring that up really quickly, you can see what I'm trying to achieve with that. And it's coming together. Once it's trimmed off, it'll look great. Right, back to the vid. Dead easy, eh? Obviously, you can adjust the sizes. You can use pins, you can use thinner strips, you can use cardboard and wire if you want. But that's the basic technique. So we've got a daz in, we've got a little bit of wattle. Yeah, we're gonna drop that slap bang in the middle. Okay, so yeah, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do, is much like I did with the other one. I'm gonna get bits, not as much this time, and fill them from the edge and just go round it. Just fill it all in. It'll take me a sec. And so that's done, and if I bring it up for you, there you go, you can see at the bottom there how beautiful it looks. Now, at the same time, I have filled in the other four squares, and if you look just above the Watland orb, you can see one of the other benefits of using Daz. Yes, you can scratch things into it. I mean, if you want, you can go whole hog, you can do quite big scratches, chip things out, let it dry, then just roll a couple of tiny balls of blau, a blob and use it like it's been patched. Obviously, it's Daz modeling putty, you know, you can do quite a lot with it. But it's a relatively simple technique. Just remember, wet ramp rag because it, it does dry off, it will make it hard to work with. So keeping your tools wet, keeping your hands wet, wet the surface so it can adhere once again. Unless you're doing the wattle and daub or any specific technique, Throw the bit in the middle and push it out to the sides. Don't throw it into the sides and try and push it into the middle. A wet finger will smooth it off perfectly and you'll end up with something beautiful. Yeah. So, here are some picks. I'll be back in a sec. So guys, there you have it. Three simple techniques to produce awesome Watland door for your European timber frame structures. And if we just very quickly recap, we've got the sandpaper. Yeah, remember, go for a fine grit sandpaper. You can go for a larger grit if you want a real gritty feel, if that's the style of your terrain, obviously. Yeah, super glue is better than PVA because it doesn't wrinkle the paper or anything like that. And if you don't fancy all the fancy cutting, just cut a large sheet out and then lay your timber frames on top of the sandpaper. 
don't be mal. Next up, we had our stippling with the filler. Remember, with the stippling with the filler, less is genuinely more. Blob of filler, tiny little bit amount of water, spread it out, start to stipple it. Okay, use a hog's hair brush for controlling the moisture. And if you don't get the results you want first time, let it dry, go back in and either wet it and wipe it all off, yeah, or go back in and stipple a little bit more on for perfect results. And then finally, yeah, our Daz modeling putty, which as you can see, if you're willing to invest the time on the detailing, is perfect for the detailing. But if you just want some very simple timbers, yeah, really quick, really easy, just push it in. Once again, wet the bottom surface, push it on, push it into the edges. Sometimes you have to scrape out a bit of excess, don't worry about it. A nice soft brush will smooth it off, yeah? And of course, you know, you've got the Watton and Daub effect, and you can do cracking and patching and all that sort of stuff. So, there's three techniques for you to do your timber frame Watland daubs. You'll be needing that in the future, guys. Obviously, as always, got any questions? Get them down below. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you with your hobby, guys. If you've got a different way of doing it, I want to know it. Yeah, get that down. Share it with the Terrainiacs. Make sure you join the Terrainiac group. Like, share. And finally, if you really do appreciate these videos, guys, please consider supporting the channel. I rely on you guys who make it to the end of the videos and really appreciate them for like, you know, the dollar a month on Patreon or the one off down below via PayPal. Either way, you know, it keeps me here helping you with your hobby and I can't do it without you guys. So if you like it, please support it. In the meantime, links, and all that sort of stuff and other stuff. And then I'll see you real soon with more tutorials. We're definitely getting close to releasing the historical ones, guys. See you soon. All the best. Ta-da.